Yeah, okay, great. Um, so I'm going to give a very quick uh, presentation on just some recent updates on the plate reconstructions and geodynamic models. Um, and of course, a lot of this is, is not just my work, but the entire plate reconstructions and geodynamic modeling team. Um, here's a, a, I guess, a summary slide of all the updates. Um, I guess what I, the main takeaway here is that uh, if you're using the plate reconstructions, really uh, do make uh, an effort to use the latest, say the Miller et al. 2019 reconstructions, because they have a lot of improvements and bug fixes that we've put in uh, throughout the base and Genesis Hub. One of the most recent publications is a huge update to the uh, present day seafloor age grid. Uh, this is uh, work led by Maria. It's incorporating a lot of uh, incredibly painstaking work of uh, updating magnetic uh, picks and the database and, and, and so on. Uh, updating the reconstructions, of course, because these uh, seafloor age gridding requires that too. Um, on a technical level, it uses spherical interpolation, which doesn't really change much except for in the Ar Arctic, um, it, it definitely makes an improvement. So perhaps uh, the Equinor team might uh, uh, be looking at this. And um, uh, of course, it's not just the seafloor age grid, it's the uh, spreading rates uh, and um, asymmetries and so on that, that are calculated, presented in, the, in that work. Um, earlier today, uh, there was a uh, presentation essentially update well, we've had the deforming model, the global deforming model, and the most recent addition to a region has been by uh, Zhenji Kao for uh, South China since the Jurassic. So that's been really quite detailed and quite interesting. Um, for the East Pacific, there's been a, a model for the last 170 million years uh, from uh, Clenet et al. 2020, looking at the tomography and the subducted slabs in the Pacific, trying to populate some of these intraoceanic uh, subduction systems in the in the Pacific and how that relates to the Cordilleran margin of uh, Western North America. Um, there's some very interesting results there, um, and uh, I, I guess the next uh, push will be to merge this branch into the global branch and uh, try to uh, check it against a lot of the detailed geological uh, data because this work was mainly work focused on the tomography. Um, and so this is essentially what that model uh, looks like. Um, of course, as well, just the other day, it was uh, published uh, the model for the last billion years. This is by Andrew Murdoch uh, and others uh, in Earth Science Reviews. So we, we have a continuous uh, a plate reconstruction model for the last billion years. Um, so it captures a full uh, supercontinent cycle uh, it uses a new paleomagnetic reference frame that optimizes uh, continental speeds by capturing uh, paleo latitude and age uncertainties. And I think that's quite a novel uh, approach as well. Uh, and the first geodynamic modeling work using that uh, one billion year to present model is from Zhenqi Kao. And this is a really impressive, beautiful uh, model you can see here um, uh, from Sitcom S. Um, and here you can actually see the dynamics involved in, uh, plume movements and the LLSVP movements as they respond to subduction, subducting plates. Um, over the years, I've been uh, updating, I guess, the eastern hemisphere of the whole Tethys. I'm not going to dwell on this too much, but essentially trying to use some of the more recent paleo latitudinal constraints from Paleomag. Um, so that will be incorporated, um, of course, related to Papua New Guinea. Um, we've been, we've settled on a collision uh, age for the CPIC terrain at 15 million years ago, but some of the recent data points to um, the CPIC terrain originating from uh, Northeast Australia rather than Northern Australia. So that's going to require some uh, edits. Um, and of course, what we're trying to do is improve the details of the Philippine sea plate uh, and, and really um, trying to um, reconcile it with the paleomagnetic rotational paleo latitude histories. Uh, that includes the Proto-South China Sea, which I'm not going to dwell on here uh, today, but there's been some robust debate on uh, whether it exists or not. So the whole sitcom S uh, slab assimilation workflow is now on, on the Earthbyte uh, GitHub. Um, uh, so Dan Bauer has removed all the Python Pythia wrapper. Uh, so it's a pure C code now. Uh, we've worked to make it work with the latest SciPy and NumPy 
and there's a lot of uh, documentation and example files. Uh, so currently the incompressible models work best and there's a bit more work on the pseudo compressible models, which of course have uh, been quite fruitful in, in helping us uh, reproduce the regional patterns of uh, dynamic topography. Um, so I, I guess I've, well, I, I've been very proud uh, and lucky to have been involved in the Basin Hub over the last five years and enjoyed interactions with students and industry partners. And it's been a, a really dynamic phase of uh, a regional and global plate motion development. Um, and uh, it's great to see it being used uh, and linked up with, with Badlands and other workflows. So um, it'll be interesting to ex extend the current G plates deformation functionality uh, and uh, use the focus deformation that John has put in. Um, so there's, yeah, lo lots, lots of great things have happened and lots of good things to come as well. Um, and I'll leave it there, uh, you know, if you've got any questions. <laughs>